Join me as I explore the exciting world of model railways with behind the scenes features, step-by-step -step tutorials, interviews, videos, reviews, and much, much more. I'm Dawn Quest and I love building model railways. I'm here in Ashford, Kent, in the southeast corner of the country, known for its rich railway history. Also, the Eurostar stop on the way to Europe, which doesn't stop here anymore. And it's home to the Ashford Festival of Railway Modelling. It's a great weekend, some lovely layouts. Let's go take a look. And as Ashford is on the doorstep to Europe, where better to start than with this one, Solden. It's an HOE gauge by John Morgan and takes us on a narrow gauge ride in the Austrian Alps. John says that while Solden isn't of an actual location itself, it's very much in the spirit of the Austrian N gauge systems. Staying in Europe, but on the German-Dutch border in the 1960s, Wegberg and Arsbeck is a beautiful layout originally created by Alan Thompson and left to the Eastbourne Model Railway Club in his will. Well, further afield, and you'll need a plane to get to the inspiration behind this layout. Chiganji River is an N gauge river gorge bridge and railway in the mountainous central region of Japan. It's created by John Garner and it's making its debut at the Ashford Festival of Railway Modelling. I'd been sent photos of Chiganji River, but really, this is one that you have to see in its entirety, in the flesh, so to speak, because it is absolutely stunning. So in 2019, I went on a trip to um, the north central region of Japan um, and I went on the Tatayama um, Kurobe Railway and that follows the, the Joganji River and there was this most amazing red bridge over the river and um, I just thought it had to be modelled. It was such an inspirational landscape. Growing up in the UK, I was so used to the rolling hills of the British countryside 
and then turning up in Japan where it's so mountainous and there's these huge river valleys and the trains are running high up above the, the gorges. I think it's that sort of aspect of mountains and railways that I really are just, I'm drawn to. Um, and I just love big landscapes. Because it's JR East region, which is Japan Rail, uh, I choose to run um, Japanese uh, Kato and Tomix uh, company rolling stock, mainly from the JR East region. So a lot of modern era stuff, but I like to run the steam locomotives as well to give it that nice atmosphere. I think it's much more vibrant um, than I originally imagined. Um, I think it was a really good choice doing the, the autumnal colours as I hadn't seen a lot of models with that before and I really wanted to capture the seasonal image of Japan. The feedback's been really good. It's the layout's debut um, this weekend and everyone are, is really impressed by um, the colours and just something different which you don't usually see on the exhibition circuit. Among the layouts on show this weekend are several that have been donated to AIMREC, the Ashford International Model Railway Education Centre, and hosts of the exhibition. Cranach is a beautiful layout, reworked by AIMREC, of a model built in Ashford in the 1990s, depicting a typical West Highland Line station. This next layout needs no introduction, it's Melton Mowbray North, the award-winning and popular model of the LNW and GN route in N scale, set in the early 1950s and created by John Spence and Steve Weston. Also on show this weekend is Wishton, a very special layout, created by John Wiley, who sadly passed away in 2023. John was a professional model maker and photographer whose work featured regularly in hobby magazines between 1977 and 1990. John actually worked on sets for Thunderbirds and Joe 90, and he was a lecturer in model making at both Greenwich University and Kent Institute of Art and Design in Medway. He wrote the very popular book, The Professional Approach to Model Railways, first published in 1987. Wishton embodies John's principles of how to blend a model railway with surrounding landscape in a realistic way. In the latter stages of his illness, John contacted AIMREC about providing a long-term home for Wishton. AIMREC have spent considerable time and dedication returning Wishton to its running condition, and it's the first time that AIMREC has presented it at an exhibition. Now, if you've watched my previous video on AIMREC, you'll know that I talked about the Cato Mini Dioramas. They're a particular favourite of mine, and John, who created Giganti River, was building one at the time we visited back in December. Well, here they all are, a collection of mini dioramas in a mini diorama circus, and they're all incredibly individual, incredibly detailed, and look absolutely splendid. And the winner of the mini diorama circus is Jack, who built this fabulous pirate ship diorama. I think I bought the, the little kits that they come in about uh, 
probably a week or two before Christmas last year. But I, was, I wanted to do something a bit more creative because that's what the, uh, the little brochure tells you to think about. So the plan is, is that I've made it in such a way I can dismantle it without damaging anything. So the hope is that maybe in a future exhibition I can build something new on, on the same board. Well done, Jack. And staying with the water theme, it's Eastgate Harbour by Robin Brogdon. And we last saw Robin at Abrail with his fabulous Museum of Transport. This one is no less spectacular. Another incredibly detailed and interactive layout is St Petrock Quay, featuring working cranes, a Tamar barge and wagon lift. This is by Angus Bentley and it's a Cornish dual gauge O stroke O 16.5. It's a real treat. Continuing with the unusual gauges and the gauge you choose for your layout is sometimes a matter of perspective. This one is Ballyconnell Road. It depicts the Great Northern Railway of Ireland in County Sligo in the 1950s, meticulously modelled in 3mm by Stephen Moore and the 3mm Irish Group. I especially love this distinctive blue loco with its mahogany wagons. I last saw clearly end at Tunbridge is a compact 0 16.5 mm layout by Peter Jackson and depicts a narrow gauge line in Dorset handling stone traffic from a nearby quarry. From stone to cement and this one is a very beautiful little layout, a 009 layout by Chris O'Donoghue. It's inspired by artist Eric Revillius's trio of cement works paintings from 1934. 
Over to you, Chris. He was a painter who worked between the wars and was a war artist as well. Sadly lost his life over the North Atlantic in 1942. But before that, he did lots of watercolours over the South, the South Downs particularly. But he also painted the cement works north of Lewis. And I took one of his paintings and thought, wouldn't it be great to do that in three dimensions? So I started working on buildings based on the buildings he'd painted. This is the first exhibition I've been to with it. It's a very simple layout. There are just two points in it and just three sidings. And the idea is a, a train load of skip wagons will come in loaded up with chalk and they will go out through the works off stage. The chalk will be taken out and then the wagons will come back empty. And then another rake of wagons will come in with no load in them. They will go out through the works and come back with bags of cement. I'm afraid it all started with a layout that I made um, based on Rye Harbour, based at a little railway running along there. And I started writing about the character that I created on the railway and it became the Chronicles of Compass Point. And I thought, I'm really enjoying writing this, so I expanded it and wrote my first book, which was called Blood on the Tide, where a body gets washed up at Rye Harbour and the story's gone from there. So I'm in the process of writing book seven now. Also offering something different at the exhibition was this one. You may recognise it. And there was travelling to Wedded Bliss, as seen in Railway Modeler magazine last December. This is Jeff and Teresa Harmer's 00 wedding cake, made for southeastern couple Luke and Claire's wedding day. And here they are, the happy couple. I mentioned that I was very keen to find out what Bob and Nigel's cardboard world was all about. Well, here they are. They're a range of superb two and a half inch gauge card and paper scale models featuring classic Ashford built designs. Also scratch built from cardboard, these models at Milton Junction. Chris builds most of his stock from scratch and he based Milton Junction on the platform ends of a mainland station. George Ansell of Ivanhoe Model Railway Club created what you might call a wind-up train, not in the traditional sense, but with these two layouts back to back, it was designed to wind up his friend. He created two layouts back to back to fool his friend into thinking that he'd brought the wrong one. Both are shunting layouts and in the same vein is Pete's Yard, shunting in the 1960s Southern style by Peter Davis, Another shunting layout is Mossdale Road, a first time outing for David Campbell's compact N scale creamery set, as seen in the June 2023 edition of Railway Modeler. Some old school layouts now and Dublingham goods, or Hornby 003 rail, superbly presented by Tony Harris, with a shunting timetable inspired by Peter Denny's Buckingham branch. There was also a triple combo, Trix Twin, try saying that without your teeth in, 3 Rail Heaven and Totally Triang, a trio of vintage layouts by AIMREC volunteers Brian McClelland and David Johnson. And how about this one, a classic Triang TT shop layout. This layout was saved from a skip several years ago and its current owner Steve Smith continues to collect items to complete its restoration to an original shop display. As we're in the Kent and East Sussex area, this exhibition wouldn't be complete without some local layouts. Starting with Lenham, Andy Town's N-scale exhibition favourite, depicting the station and surrounding industry in the 1950s and 60s. I'll let you in on a little secret. Andy let me go behind the layout to take some of these shots. It certainly gave me a different perspective. An absolutely stunning layout with so much attention to detail. One of my favourites. The Kent and East Sussex Circular Tour is an N-gauge layout by Fred Garner. You'll see him a little bit later. He's the power behind this amazing weekend and also behind AIMREC. 
I'll be talking to him just a little bit later. Chris Cooper's beautiful layout recreates the latter days of the Hawkehurst branch in the 1950s and 60s after the halcyon days of the hot pickers line were over, but before it came into the sights of Mr Beeching. Like a lot of model railway builders in this area, Chris has childhood memories of growing up near the line, providing the inspiration for this N-scale model, which features scratch-built buildings and structures. The last time I saw this layout, it had 938 trees, and counting. I wonder if there are any more. It's by Ashford-based Phil Lamkin and is set in the Kentish countryside. It was lovely to see some layouts for children, or inspired by children, in this case grandchildren. Warner's Oak is a tabletop railway in Double O by David Warner, and he built it for his grandchildren. It features Thomas and Friends, of course, and a working roadway in a traditional town scene. Finley's Adventure Park is a fun and ambitious first exhibition layout for Finley and his dad James Marks. I love this layout so much going on, including that famous chair plane as Fred calls it. There's also McFly performing on the stage, and it's a layout that features fire, water and smoke. So much going on there. No model railway show these days is complete without a Lego railway, and in this case some rather technical Lego at that. A lot of work has gone into those, I can tell. As you might expect, a smattering of Engage at this exhibition, starting with New Dolby. This features railway technical centre operations in N-Scale by Andrew Porter of Ivanhoe Model Railway Club and as seen in Hornby magazine in November 2023. Hither Green PAD is Carl White's N-scale model of pre-assembly sidings at Hither Green, featuring engineering trains and on-track plant. And this unusual layout, Quiet City, a new N-scale layout by Martin Temlett, inspired by the railway network of Transylvania. Of course, I couldn't end a video about the Ashford Festival of Railway Modelling without speaking to the man behind it all, Fred Garner. An inspiration to many, his hard work and determination has seen AIMREC develop and grow over the years to become something of an institution in the area. And his exhibition this weekend was a real pleasure. An incredibly enjoyable weekend made possible by such a friendly bunch of people, some beautiful layouts and all went so smoothly. So let's give Fred the final word. It's been absolutely amazing. Uh, I've been so pleased with the response from the people of Ashford and much further afield, and so pleased with uh, our, our exhibitors for putting on such a great show, some of them having come such a long way, including places like Morecambe, uh, which is a long drive to Ashford. Um, I think the traders have done quite well. I think the societies have done well. And I know through speaking to the visitors, they've all had a great time.
As usual, if you like this video, please do like, share, and of course, subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of all my future videos. I'm Dawn Quest, and this is Model Railway Quest.